Hello and welcome to the Philippines. Many of you watching this channel are planning to retire in the Philippines or at least uh, make a visit here. In How will that affect your life? How will that affect your thinking about your home country uh, or about the Philippines or other countries? Uh, I tell you, it, it can have a major impact on your life, on your thinking. Um, whether you move here or any other foreign country, the key being foreign country. Uh, you know, a lot of people in, in other countries don't think the way we do. Uh, I'm talking, many of, many of you are from some of the Western countries, the U.S., Canada, Australia, uh, Europe as well. And uh, so I think you know what I'm talking about. And, uh, you know, uh, I still have... I still have some friends who, who have been here probably eight, nine, ten years, and uh, they'll still say, in America, this is the way we do it. And, you know, I, I made that mistake early on. Uh, just in, I, I know I went to a pharmacy, and, uh, you know, I get these little, I've got to go, go get my over-the-counter drugs over-the-counter. I've got to talk to the pharmacist or the receptionist behind the, uh, counter to get things that I'm used to just grabbing off the shelf, a whole bottle of pills, whatever I want. And uh, I've got to go there and, and, and get the little packet, and I, I can't get the quantities that I want. And uh, I've said, uh, well, in America, you know, we get a we got a big bottle, and it's sitting on the shelf out here. We can just pick it up and go to the cashier. And uh, the look that she gave me, I understood right away that uh, they really don't care how how we do it in America. Well, that, that, that doesn't encompass everybody. That's kind of a general statement. But, uh, you know, as, as many people will, will confirm, you know, you can help. You can help and make an influence on a certain group around you, whether they're foreigners or other Westerners. Uh, you, can, you can have some influence. Uh, but overall, you are not going to change uh, the way things are done here. Um, I've seen a lot of changes in the almost eight years that, that I've been here, three trips, eight years, uh, lived in six different condominiums uh, in Cebu City, and uh, we'll talk about some of the viewpoints. I'm looking forward to getting comments from, from all you out there, too. What, how did it change your life? What were your perceptions? How did your perceptions change as you made multiple visits or you stayed here multiple years in the Philippines? Many of you will end up with long-term girlfriends, and you will end up moving to wherever that girlfriend's family, that island that the girlfriend's family is at. I've met a number of uh, number of expats who came here, and they, they meet some, a girl. They're here in Cebu City, and they meet a girl from Manila, comes down, meet, and they date, and they live down here for a while. And uh, she starts getting homesick. And... Uh, they moved back to Manila, and I know he didn't. He didn't like it in Manila. They stayed there, I think, over a year. Came back to Cebu, but uh, eventually she got homesick. She went. She went back. She would apply for jobs here, I guess, uh, but would never. She said she she wasn't accepted for the job. And uh, my my friend said I, I think she just doesn't want a job down here. She wants to go back to her family. Hey, if you're new to the channel, uh, can consider subscribing. I think over 70% of the people who watch my channel have not subscribed. Uh, thumbs up uh, and comments also help with the algorithms. Appreciate all of that. By the way, this is a 360 degree video. If you're watching on a smartphone, you can just turn that phone around different directions and you'll be able to view the various uh, directions up and down tall sides and back behind me. Uh, Insta360 X3 is what I'm using and it has been suggested. A lot of people say the video is very high quality and there's a few people say it's kind of blurry and what I found on my computer too. I've got my resolution set, set to automatically and sometimes it will give me a video in a very low resolution. So what you need to do is go into the settings on YouTube on your device and and bump it up to at least 1080p or or 2k or 4k depending on what your device can handle 
This is the huge Carbone Market uh, downtown area of Cebu City. And uh, after 5.30, uh, about 5.30, they start setting up all these uh, stands. So we waited uh, to go down. We, I think I spent about 1,500 pesos, about a little less than $30. We've got four large sacks of vegetables. Uh, pretty good prices down there. A lot of the other local markets come here to buy their stuff. And then, of course, they need to make a profit. Nothing wrong with that. My local market down the street is much more convenient. A lot of times I go there to buy my stuff, but maybe once a month we come down here and uh, get a, a big haul. The food is much cheaper than you will find in the supermarket 99.9% uh, .9 of the time and usually much fresher as well. And uh, you don't have all that trash packaging they, they put on the items in the supermarkets. Anyway, retiring to the Philippines definitely can be, will be a life-changing situation. You can start a new life here um, for your own sake. Don't bring your, don't bring your bad baggage. And I'm not talking about your suitcases that are falling apart. Your your emotional baggage, uh, your financial baggage, whatever it is that's holding you back wherever you are, that's making you unhappy. You can be happy here. You can be happy back in your own country, but you need to. Look to the future. Look, look, look forward instead of looking back. Living uh, with all those demons in your life that some of us have had in the past. Something that will happen uh, to many of you. Uh, well, many of you are in in a relationship. You met somebody online. You've got a long-term relate, long-distance relationship. You've never met the person. In fact, I met a, uh, a waitress at a, a place the other day. And she said, yeah, she had a boyfriend from Canada uh, for over a year, and she's never met him. You know, he, might, he might come sometime in the next year. And, uh, you know, I <laughs> there are videos out there on long-term relationships, and some of them work out, some of them don't. When you finally meet, you find out that, that uh, you're not really compatible, you're not uh, attracted to each other, um, don't have any of the same interests. You know, there, there are many marriages that actually work out. The, the wife has her interests, her friends, and you have your interests and your friends, and you have enough freedom in that relationship uh, where you're able to exercise and uh, be happy in that relationship and with your, with your own friends, your own life. And it's, it is very easy if you don't have a, a girlfriend, a, a contact at this point in time when you get here. Um, for most people, it is very easy to meet somebody. Um, just, gosh, here at the market might be, might be easy. You start talking to people and uh, get a phone number or whatever at the, at the malls. Uh, and I've got friends, uh, like I said, I've been here for a number of years, and they, they tell me, yeah, I met, met somebody walking down the street. We start talking, got her phone number, and, uh, yeah, they've been, they've been friends for a number of years already. And uh, so it's very easy to meet somebody here to start a relationship. Uh, culture here is a little different probably from back in your country where – Casual dating, more long-term dating, is accepted as normal. Here, and I've told many people, by the by, the second or third date, uh, they they consider it. And I'm using the broad term "they," as in Filipinas, uh, consider that a serious relationship. And uh, had a met a friend the other day, a subscriber. I meet occasionally, he's been here a couple of years at least, and uh, asked him about his girlfriend. And he said, yeah, same one I had. Uh, she moved in with me, and I don't know how that happened. <laughs> I've heard that story many times, and uh, he wasn't really happy with that. She just came and stayed and didn't leave. And the that can be a problem if if, if they move in with you and uh, 
there's this thing called face. Uh, it's not just here in Asia and the Philippines, but all around the world to some degree. Uh, they tell their family and friends, I've got this foreign boyfriend and we're doing this and we're going here and we're taking trips that I could never go on before. And uh, if they lose that, they lose face. Um, breaking up is hard to do anywhere in the world under the best circumstances, usually. I've, I've broken up with a girl and was pr pretty uh, agreeable for both of us. Um, you know, we, we hugged and went, went on our ways. Uh, it was an interesting, interesting uh, few months anyway, and we decided, no, this isn't going to work out. Decided early. But uh, it, can be, it, it can be difficult breaking up. Um, Emotionally and physically, financially. What about communication? What about uh, getting around and taking care of business and uh, everything that you need to do on a daily basis? Of course, English is the second language, second official language that, uh, that is taught in the schools. Um, some people speak it, understand it, and speak it very well. Some people uh, understand it to some de to varying degrees, but they're not comfortable answering in English. And I, I, I get that uh, quite often. It's going to depend on what part of the Philippines you're in. Some, some places, some people, uh, areas, especially if you're in the tourist areas or the bigger cities, uh, you'll find many more people speaking uh, speaking uh, English rather well, and I've I've run into very uh, senior citizens that speak English very well. I've run into little kids that speak English very well, and yet other members of their family do not. For some reason, I think there is a talent, a gift to learning languages, and some do much better if you have the interest. And uh, some people just pick it up and are able to. Uh, pick up the languages different and it, it can be difficult because the Filipino language they've got sounds they've got letters in their alphabet and sounds in their alphabet and they pronounce the various vowels and sounds differently than we do in most of the Western countries so that that is that makes it difficult for me learning the language now I can read uh, some Visaya which is Cebuano Visaya here in the central Visayas area and learning a little bit of Tagalog, which is the Filipino language. But even though all the tourist books say, oh, 80% of the people uh, are, are fluent in, in English, well, that's not true. Absolutely not true. They learn it as a second language. You've heard the term use it or lose it, and a lot of people don't use it. They have uh, a lot of people actually have three languages, and the Filipino language. Filipino language, English, and uh, how well you learned English, of course, depends upon your teacher. Did, did, did she speak very good English or not? And teach it uh, with some degree of passion. And what most people speak, the most common language is the local language. Visaya, the Visaya language, Cebuano, very similar. I think is the most widely spoken language here in the central Visayas, a little bit of Mindanao, different areas and regions. Um, Filipino, which is basically part, mostly Tagalog and uh, with a mix of other national languages as well, uh, is the national language. but. I've had uh, a number of times over the years, in fact, one day, many years ago, I asked a group of girls I was traveling with, I said, uh, only speak Filipino, Tagalog today. And they, they told me, we have enough trouble with English, and they were Visaya speakers, we have enough trouble with English, it would be even more difficult to speak Filipino, Tagalog all day because we don't use it and I, I asked them what is what do these what does this sign say and it was in Filipino Tagalog and uh, they had to chat for a while and before they could come up with uh, with the answer 
And one thing I've, I mentioned in a previous video is that if you're going to a pharmacy, for instance, write down what it is you're looking for. Um, they've got different brands. They've got, they've, got, uh, uh, they, they've got different brand names for what you're looking for. So if you tell them the brand name, it's, gonna, it's not going to make any sense to them. So write down actually what is the drug that the over-the-counter drug or the prescription drug that you're looking for. And that will help write it down because, like I said, your pronunciation of the drug is different than what their pronunciation is and I've had I've gone back and forth and trying to multiple times trying to pronounce pronounce the item for instance Aleve and and Sudafed uh, Advil Advil are, are popular drugs in America and in, in Europe well they don't have Aleve here they've got uh, something called Flanax and so I had to learn that uh, they, their, their name for the product is different than, than what we use in the Western countries. So what will you do? How will, how will you adjust here? How will you spend your time? What will you do? What will make you happy? And you really should sit down and think about that, make a list. Um, is it going to the mall every day? Is it uh, sitting at home watching television all day, uh, having a place by the beach, um, going to the bars and chasing girls <laughs> might be top priority for some of you. Um, but all that can get old after a while. You can, uh, you can get frustrated with, uh, you know, the, the slower pace of life. And I, I will admit there, there are times I get, I get a little impatient uh, but overall, you know, the, the Philippine people are the biggest asset uh, in the Philippines. And, uh, you know, they don't know who you are, what language you speak. They know you're a foreigner in most cases. They can see that. And it is, if you are friendly to them, they're generally friendly back. And even down here in the market where... Uh, which is undergoing a big change, by the way. They're modernizing it, and uh, so if you've been down here a year ago, it's much different. They they widened some of the streets, and they're continuing to change it. They they built I think two or three new more modern buildings, three four stories high, and they're going to be moving some of these people. I think will be moving into some of those buildings. The Philippines is a small country with a huge population. It is about the size of the state of Arizona or about the size of Nevada in the USA. Italy is a little bit larger land area. If you take all the Philippine islands, put them together land area-wise. Uh, Arizona, for instance, has, I think, about 7 million people. And the Philippines, in about the same land area, has about, I think, 113 million people. Uh, by 2030, I think they're projected to be, uh, gosh, I forget the numbers, but uh, 10 or 20 million more people. So that's a lot of people, and there's, uh, there's dense population. And uh, e even when you get out of the city, it's like you're traveling through um, smaller towns and settlements, uh, even up in the mountains, uh, there's a lot of people, a lot of people scattered around. So you're going to have to get used to that. The sounds, the smells, the food. You know, if you're in the bigger cities uh, like uh, Cebu City, Manila, um, uh, probably Dumaguete, Iloilo, Bacolod. Uh, I have not been to Davao yet, probably Davao, uh, Baguio, not sure about Baguio. Up in the mountains, um, your food choices are going to be a little bit greater. Once you get out of uh, the me medium to large size cities, your your choices are going to be reduced substantially. As far as restaurants, food choices, uh, probably the grocery stores, you're not going to find as much of the uh, international various foreign foods. 
I've done lots of videos about money. In fact, I'll, I'll put a link to uh, money tips uh, about transferring money and that sort of thing. I've done cost of living videos, a lot of uh, real estate and condominium videos. I always carry a camera. I had these real estate guys grab me in the mall and say, come and look at my condo. And I, I'd, I'd take videos and put them up. And so if you do a search for various condos, especially in the Cebu City area, you will find uh, links to my my videos in various condos, although there's a lot I haven't been in yet. Foreigners can own condominiums here in the Philippines, and I believe in Thailand you can. Uh, Vietnam, I'm not sure. You, foreigners cannot own land. They can be part of a corporation that owns land, but generally a foreigner will uh, either put the uh, land will lease the land or, or have it in in their wife's name and uh, a foreigner can uh, under certain certain types of circumstances uh, best to see a lawyer about that you can lease land and own the building on the land um, some businesses and they they uh, they have uh, opened this up a little bit more in the last year or two and I'm not sure the details foreigners uh, can own 100% certain types of businesses. BPO, business process outsourcing, is one, I believe. And they've opened that up a little bit. Um, there again, I'm not sure all the details. Uh, but generally, a foreigner can only own 40% of a business, and 60% has to be owned by, by uh, Filipinos. Same thing with a condominium building. You can own... 100% of that condominium unit or units depending on how many you buy but the building itself has to be owned by 60% Filipinos so they, they've got to sell 60% of the units to Filipinos square footage wise square, square meter wise the culture is is uh, different here than what you have in your home country um, they're very friendly. They are tolerant. They are um, even welcoming in, in most areas. Um, you know, I've heard Thailand has changed a lot over the years, and now it's all about uh, getting as much money from you as, as they can. Uh, so it's it's more tourist. But the, the Filipinos still are... are very friendly, very welcoming, and uh, you don't get that type of attitude in most areas. Cost of living, you can you can live very expensively, or if, if you're careful, you can you can live very cheap here. Uh, even in the big city, you, if, if you look around, and if you shop at the markets, um, you can save a lot of money. There are certain challenges, like there would be any place in the world. Uh, you've got uh, You've got weather issues. Uh, you've got some heavy rains and flooding in some areas. Uh, I just read, I think the Northeast USA has had some some pretty high uh, rains and flooding. Other parts of the world can happen any place. Uh, occasional typhoon that hit, makes landfall here. Um, you've got, uh, of course, you've got the poverty um, to deal with. You've got the Philippine money the philippine peso and your exchange rates to get used to my health i, I will say i've always been uh, relatively healthy but my health has uh, improved here i think you know there's there's a higher level of humidity than than what i'm used to and i talked to a doctor uh, a few years ago i had a sinus infection he says yeah we treat a lot of foreigners they're not used to the constant higher humidity uh, so that's something um, as far as my health, you know, and uh, I get less so headaches here, for instance. Uh, I'm not sure if it's because closer to the equator. I think they're related to the uh, storms that happen on the uh, on the sun. I, I used to think it was high pressure, low pressure, but I think it has more to do with uh, sun's energy. And uh, there's uh, there there are sites online that talk about that. Suspicious observers, and a number of other ones to talk about when the sun is 
blasting out certain types of energy our way. Uh, it affects uh, us electrically. It affects communication. You get the uh, auroras in the northern hemisphere. Recently, they came all the way even down into the mid latitudes, I think. But generally, yeah, I feel healthier here, I less stress. I've got a friend I met the other day, just came back, and he said, man, I'm really stressed out. I was in line in the grocery store, and I was in a hurry. And So, yeah, it, you know, take a couple deep breaths, you know, when you get stressed out. Um, in the end, decisions you make are going to affect your life, short-term and long-term. Um, where you live, you have those choices. How soon you get um, into a serious relationship is going to have a big effect on your life going forward. So think about that. Take precautions. So wherever you go, wherever you settle down, whether, whatever relationship you get involved with, uh, I wish you all the best of luck. And uh, anyway, this is going to be the end of the video. See you next time.